we're going to begin our session with me first. Uh, I'll connect with you. I'll say, hey, Lilu, are you ready for, for your work? Because I, I just really need to have your full cooperation and willingness. I don't work against your willingness on an energetic level. So you tell me when you're ready. You ready? I'm ready, yeah. Okay, now I'm going to ask you for your birthday. And I'm going to have your birthday. Um, I'm going to listen to the vibration of that and follow that frequency and dial in. So for all the world to know, when is your birthday? My birthday is the 20th of August, 1977. Okay. Now, as I follow that frequency, I am immediately shown three themes or storylines that you have played out, multiple lives. So these are identities that you have comfortably kind of settled into. And the first of those identities, they, these are like our archetypes. These are like the, the overarching soul expressions that we settle into. And the first of these for you, I would call the soldier, the crusader. Um, literally, I think you were in the crusades. I'm shown that you were a crusader. And you've been a crusader of sorts throughout many, 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 many lifetimes. You are a soul on a mission to challenge darkness, to, to liberate the people from being enslaved. You've done it in a literal way. You've done it in physical fighting. You've done it in uh, um, psychological ways. You've been a soul who has studied many forms and many, many means of of educating people, and now, in this lifetime, you're doing it in an artful way, mm -hmm. elevating the spirit, bringing light to the shadow, but you're still crusading against the darkness. And you're doing a beautiful job of it. Where I'd like to bring some insight is that you don't want to necessarily stay um, unconsciously connected to darkness as your motivator because it might feel like you're treading water. There's always going to be shadow and light. But just really move more toward the idea of being the creative, being the artist, being someone who who activates and elevates new ideas, new consciousness, new horizons, new vistas, and the part I would like to see you liberate yourself from is the part uh, that's around struggle. Your soul unconsciously is accustomed to a battle, and there's this overlay or this imprint in the way you address your life that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to achieve, I'm going to succeed, I'm going to fight the good fight where I'd like to see the fight end, that there is no fight, that this is a win-win life for you, and that the, there is no enemy to battle, there is no struggle to have, there is no sacrifice to make, there's just you to succeed in bringing creative enlightenment to a planet that's ready to receive it. Because there's this friction or this underlying um, vibration in you of it's a struggle and I'm going to succeed. But it wears you down. Do you feel that? Mm -hmm. Do you feel that sense of struggle? Yeah. It, it's almost like it almost could be for you a touchstone or, or a way to, to push yourself. That, oh, there's my struggle. I'm going to push myself. So there is motivation yeah. that is that is grounded in struggle and conquest. Yeah. And that can wear you down. Yeah, that, very can, much. that and I'd like to I see I feel I can only actually succeed within that struggle. I can find immense power, immense energy that liberates from there. And that's how I've been so. able to achieve a lot so far through that. 
uh, like, which is amazing in, in itself. But I clearly know that this is not part of of this well, next phase of of of, of now. Right. I would like it's to welcome a, something yeah. different. And you can understand that that struggle has been your motivation. I will go. I will fight. I will conquer. I will. I will address the shadow, the darkness, the container. But when there's not a struggle, I think you lose your edges. Yeah. You yeah. know, if something's really in struggle, there's something to push off of. And so you might want to seriously think about how you're going to, what are you going to do to replace struggle so that you can motivate from a, a creative excitement, you know, there's the sky's the limit versus the crusader against the, the, the bad guy or the negative forces or the limiting forces or the, the negative containers because you will not succeed to the degree your soul is capable of succeeding if you remain grounded and you remain rooted in struggle as your motivating factor. What would be instead... A replacement for you because the struggle is basically if you can follow the paradigm it's me against you now what if you created a paradigm that instead was going to be me against you a paradigm of win-win like what can I achieve if I create all this collaborative energy all these wonderful positive forces that want to support me work with me love me, um, envision with me, you know, collaborate with me, co-create with me, because you've been essentially a bit of a lone ranger. And you've achieved by, by, by the, the idea that I alone will go do my thing, but you've reached, you're reaching the end of what you can achieve alone. You are moving into a cycle where you really do want to begin to entertain the idea. I wonder what would happen if I had a whole team and a whole army of, of helpers and they all had very unique and individual skills that would aid me so that we became such a formidable force of light that we would we would seduced by by entertainment by creativity we would attract by being you know it's like when you see uh, fireworks in the sky everyone wants to come and see but you've not had the history of partnering and collaborating and this is new for you it would work beautifully but it's not familiar and maybe not 100% comfortable. But that would be one thing I would encourage you in terms of your creative direction to begin to embrace and accept the idea that collaborations and partnerships, working with others whom you trust, really trust, to, to enhance your life with, with their skills so that you have more skills to draw from and more skills and more skills and you could really take off. Now intuitively I feel that you're becoming you're you're consciously in alignment with this transformation. Yeah. Has and it I have started occurred? to put that in place. And to recognize and often say to those with whom you're can't connecting, I'm new at this. I'm excited, I'm eager, I'm willing, but I am new at this. So if, if at any point you don't feel that we're having a, a dynamic dialogue that's win-win, you have to bring it up. It's, yeah. my, it's my blind spot. It's not that I'm averse or unwilling. It's just not my habit. Your habit is I'll take charge, I'll run with it. And your lesson in this lifetime is very much a lesson about learning to trust and work with others and let yourself feel the, the power of support and collaboration and collective consciousness. You're still the star. You're born a star. 
And I don't mean that star personality. I mean star on the soul level. You're a star. You're a bright star. People are attracted to your frequency. It's a frequency of light. You will not have that light replaced. But one of my favorite quotes is, um, even Christ had 12 helpers. And yet he was the star. So that's even a, a thought for you. Who are my helpers? Who are the, the people that are in place to assist in my goal, who are committed to the same goal of communication, of enlightenment, of, of education, of empowerment? And this is a cycle for you to build your team. Okay? Yeah. And um, I see many lifetimes where you've been extraordinarily educated and gifted with a lot of benefactors. You've been sort of the court um, philosopher. You've been the court educator of many very empowered circumstances in the past. You know a lot, and you may not know how you know a lot. But this is just the retainment of of information. It's sort of like think of the the soul like a huge library, and no experience is lost. There, were, it's all there. You may not be drawing from all of it, but it's it's all there. And I would actually encourage you to frequently check in with your intuition. And ask your intuition what you feel in terms of making decisions because intuition will go to three sources. And the first source that it will, con it will connect with is your own soul history, your own library of experiences, your subconscious mind. The second place intuition searches for answers is telepathy. It will connect energetically with resources in the mental field, and then it'll go to higher self. You have an enormous, enormous database, if you will, on a soul level of experiences that can, can feed you. And you can trust yourself to be actually a pretty good decision maker just on intuition and, and say so. This is my intuition. This is what my soul knows to be right or correct for me right now. And the third element that I see is that you're actually very much in service and very much in purpose. And you know that. You are in purpose. There's, you don't need me to affirm that. There are maybe ways. <laughs> well, it's good to hear. But, and maybe some strategies to change. <clears throat> Bringing in a team. Trusting that team listening to that team, letting them bring to you the gifts that they possess that maybe are not your gifts. One of the things I do when I do readings, if I know consciously of some information that could support growth, I'll offer that. And in your case, I have a book I'd like to offer you in terms of building your team. It's called The Five Faces of Genius by a woman, Annette Moser-Williams, and it's about the different types of creative genius and how to build the team of complementary genius. And as you're growing, that would be really useful to you. Cool. I think you'll like it a lot. Thanks. Now I want to talk a little bit about some of your lessons and some of your blind spots and some of your goals that could be a more challenging goal. You've been a lone ranger. You are a free agent. You are a soul that does not want to be tied down or obliged to any authority figure. Mm. And that liberation is, essen is essential to you. That sense of freedom is essential to you as breathing. But this presents a problem when it comes to personal love. Because the model of personal love that you may carry could be a model that that requires a certain relinquishment of freedom. Like if I'm going to be in a relationship, I have to give up my freedom to do what I want. And so it, it, it eclipses, if you will, the capacity 
to actually engage in intimacy, which is what you want, because it, 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 the model prevents you from being your authentic self as a free agent. So we have a, a basically a, a little bit of a conflict here, a conundrum. or mm -hmm. And so what you have to do is change your model of relationship mm. so that you can allow intimacy in. And you are here to have a very, um, very new not patriarchal, not not giving up freedom to belong to someone or vice versa. You want to have a very equitable, very dynamic relationship with someone with whom you feel that you, you don't have to give up your freedom. And the first way for that to occur, because you really do, you've had many lonely lives. You, you've, you've, sacrifice personal relationship for the cause of the greater good. And you don't have to do that this time. Mm -hmm. But what you do have to do is recognize that there are different ways to relate and that you can have intimacy and you can have partnering without sacrificing your identity or your freedom. You may want to learn how to communicate, give and take, what that is in terms of partnership. But you're, one of your biggest personal goals is to have an intimate partnership. And you're very new at this. This is not what you're used to. Mm. You're used to in relationships where you leave. Love you. Got to go. Yeah. And karmically, there might even be a few who leave you because the wheel turns. But... You want to begin to consider there is the possibility of having a different kind of relationship where nobody has to, to lose their identity. It doesn't even have to be traditional, like a traditional marriage or a traditional, um, which really means traditional means patriarchal. But I do see for you um, a soul intention of wanting to experience personal intimacy and not fear that it will cost you your identity or your freedom. And I actually think that 2011 will present the opportunity for you to explore that. So there is a love interest and the outcome depends on you. You know, there's a part of you that may very well like it for a little bit and then project a lot of fear and say, I'm out of here. But I encourage you to approach relationship with fresh eyes and great honesty and, and just say up front, this is an ideal, this is what I perceive to be an ideal relationship. And sort of lay out the template that would work for you. You know, we could be monogamous, we could be intimate, we can be authentic, but we're not going to be controlling. And the interesting thing is, you yourself unconsciously may have a very controlling side when it comes to relationship. It's sort of like, I love you, and you sit there, and I'll be back. Well, that's not going to work. <laughs> so you want to know that your biggest challenge this year, and the one that you may keep most secret, is the call to evolve your, your intimacy skills. Mm -hmm. And let yourself have the kind of relationship you want. Mm -hmm. It's possible for you. And it won't cost you your freedom. Mm -hmm. So it may be different. It may be that you love someone who lives in another country. You may love someone you see every three months. That might work for you very nicely. But it doesn't mean it's any less authentic and profound and intimate. You are here to pioneer new models of relationship. And that's something that I feel will become exceedingly interesting and will catch you by surprise. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, that's exciting. Yeah. Wow. Your other blind spot is that you've not necessarily had a lot of lives where you've had to make money. Make money. Mm -hmm. You've had many lives where you've been sponsored where things have come, but money in your own hand, here's my service, here's my money, that's another bit of a blind spot for you. 
And I don't know that you have yet figured that out. And so you may want to really examine some of your beliefs about money and even some of your, your thoughts about that that has to be a struggle. It doesn't have to be a struggle. There's, there's money flows. It's just liquid creativity. And so I feel like you might, in terms of money, you may end up being unclear, evasive, indirect, not sure to ask for what you want, not sure how to negotiate. And this is another area where you're just unfamiliar. It's not your sole experience. You're a beginner in being sort of a give-and-take entrepreneur. And I'd say even read books about money and come to a place where it's just real, it, it feels more comfortable. Because in your regard, in your place, I see it's the biggest, you're your own biggest enemy. Actually, people will want to work with you, want to see that you see your message as viable, see your portal as one that could sponsor it complimentary messages, services, products, so you could become essentially like your own TV station and have sponsors who who are delighted to sponsor you. The unclear element here is you. How do you want that to happen, and how does that happen where I don't lose my freedom? Right. So these are your creative challenges. But the the sponsorship is there. See what I mean? The, the creativity is there. The, the willingness, the partnering. See how it's all collaborating together? I actually think it could be a just brilliant year for you. Brilliant year. And I think the biggest key in terms of your success is to go from the perspective of I to the perspective of we, us, group. We partnering, us, the group working together. Do you see this is new for you? And and although you're emotionally willing, you just have to develop and cultivate the habit and the consciousness that holds a bigger container. But overall, I, I admire your your crusading energies, and they're going to expand to the next level. We can. I think you can work very very diligently to eliminate the struggle, that would be a new paradigm. I honestly think you're going to find it hard to believe. It's like, I can't believe life flows without all the drama, all the effort. And how does that happen? I think that part of it is your own higher self by virtue of this conversation, and I'm, I'm pretty confident that this is not the only time you've had a conversation of this nature, because you're very willing to learn right now. And I'm very conscious of what you're pointing at right now. Right. On higher I've, em stuff. I've embarked in something uh, in the partnership level and all of that. Uh, it's fabulous. just that I'm conscious, I'm conscious of the, the self-limiting barrier that I'm putting. So in being conscious, I recommend that you, when you feel that frequency, identify it. Feel the contraction. Feel the tension. Feel the 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 impulse to speak quickly or to to react quickly and just say, let me, let me, let me contemplate that. Let me, let me assimilate this and I'll get back to you. Give yourself more time than you, you normally react. Mm -hmm. Just, I'll get back to you tomorrow. I'll get back to you this afternoon. Just give that pause. So you're working with creative intention versus reactive energy. Now, where you're in, in a good shape of the people you're talking to really match you in terms of vibration. So, you know, often we, we go into partnerships where they're not really capable of being a true partner. Either you're, they're going to carry you or you're going to carry them, but one is a greater force than the other. And so ultimately, it's a codependency rather than a partnership. But in your case, I see you attracting people and interests that, that matches you in terms of what they can contribute. So that's true partnership. That's win-win. It's very nice. And where you're going to be challenged is where are you willing to give up control? Yeah. 
Where are you willing to maybe be influenced by others who may have skills and gifts and talents and, and capabilities that are not your strength? So have that conversation. This, these are my strengths. Let me contemplate what are your strengths. And so you can really, you know, like Christ said, where two or more to get, uh, gathered in my name, I am there also means when you bring two higher selves together, two higher forms of consciousness, then you create a synergy that goes into a synthesis of something even more dynamic. Yeah. You're very intentional and you're very successful and you will, you will get, you, let me rephrase that, you will achieve your goals. You will achieve your goals. I have big, big intentions, Sonia. Sometimes it's yeah. scary. Right now, I feel like I'm doing a big jump. I feel like I'm doing a big jump. But I'm, 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 I know that I should right now. This is what it's yeah. about, letting go and just Let trusting. Let go. Practice letting go. Practice meditating. Practice even... <sighs> train the body to let go. Um, it's very important because that's how we become intuitively sharpened. But this is a year that, that you will change your whole way of being. And you will change the, the cast of characters and how you go about things. And your success is a consequence of collaboration yeah. as opposed to Lone Ranger. And it's, it's more fulfilling and it will actually be in the long run less dreamy. So, you know, to change our habits is very scary. We, we draw a lot of security from what is familiar, even if it doesn't work. But I commend you in that you are going to go through that, that kind of that wall of fire of being willing to give up control and begin to create collaborations. And you're brilliant in terms of your visioning. And I see people who can, can help anchor that visioning into a real viable portal on this plane. So you're gonna you're gonna end up with quite a quite an account quite a creation. A very impressive global creation. And you will have a team. You will you are in the process of creating a team that is in essential to that end to to succeed. So I feel very positive for you. Um, listen closely to people, ask what they want, really hear it. You get very linear because you're so goal oriented that you may only filter, does this match my goal? And you want to listen very closely to people, ask what they want, repeat what you've heard to make sure that they feel heard, Did you got it right. And you're going to find your goals come together much easier and much more quickly and with a lot less effort than you're used to putting into things because you tend to work the hard way. And though that's admirable, this is a year to learn to work smart, the easier way. So now I'm going to just step back a little bit and I have the guides available for your questions. Uh, I was, um, I'm wondering what the guides would say um, as far as advice, I mean the, the, the tour in itself, because I'm embarking on this, the Juicy Living tour. In five days, I'm flying from France to Santa Fe, New Mexico. And things are not set up because I want to have the freedom you know, and follow the guidance and to interview the people that needs to be interviewed and to broadcast this information. I'm going there without a sponsor yet. So mm -hmm. I'm, uh, people are making donations. I am personally bringing my money to, to make this happen. But, uh, you know, part of me is fearful of, I, I want to make it big, you know, and I have big plans and yet I know, though, that I'm it's, it's, it's perfectly where it's supposed to be, so that, you know. So I don't know if there is any recommendation as far as that, as far as sponsorship or partnership, or if there is uh, advice as far as to... Well, my advice is the way you're going to get support is when people meet you personally. 
Yeah. That's how it fails since the beginning. And you're in tune with that accurately. You have to go personally, and then you have to be very clear with people about what sponsorship looks like. Yeah. You have to almost have a sponsorship package. Which we do. Level, and, but it's personal. Yeah. To know you is to, to sponsor you. You're not going to be able to get the sponsors through the Internet or through others, they will meet you. They will feel your vibration. They will feel your passion. They will, and they will, and it, it'll be like a snowball that gains momentum. So you're going on faith, and that faith is not naive. It is intuitively grounded, and each place you go, you will gain more and more sponsorship. So... You're, you're taking a leap of faith, but it's grounded in your intuitive knowing, and there's enough to begin. Yeah. And I see, I see success. Yeah, it's strange how I feel certain of uh, things will that's, happen as I move along. That's intuition. That's, but at the same time, the fear kicks in at many times. What is the difference? When you feel fear, now feel it, because you do have it. Yeah. I have a question to ask you, and I want you to ask yourself. Does this fear feel true? Each time I ask myself that. What is it? What is your response? I it's, it's there. More, it's more of a fear of not wanting to let go, of, of wanting to keep the control. And then as soon as it's close to that, then there's a fear that kicks so, in. You have to say, well, I am afraid, but I'm still going to let go of control. <laughs> I have to see that this particular fear is my ego in control, and I've got to let it go. Mm. And the thing is that I always, the, because I can, I'm very generous, like over generous sometimes. It's crazy, and then it could be the all the way, you know, it goes at both spectrum. Either I'm very, very That's careful right. and I don't what? let in, or I flood it oh. in. Uh, it's just nonsense. The, the way that, that you can balance that is to remember your breath and choose to make no commitments or decisions in the moment. Yeah. I'd like to think this over and, and maybe we'll, we'll, I'd like to talk to you in an hour. Let me sit with this a little bit. Mm. And remember that as a, as a intuition and higher self can, can work if you give it an entry. So going overboard is the, the, the enthusiastic, fiery nature, but fire needs containment. Mm. So you have to pull it in and say, I have lots of thoughts I want to do, lots of things I want to say. Let me sit with it for a little bit. Are you available in an hour? Are you available this evening? Are you available tomorrow? And that's a discipline I really encourage you to integrate into your life. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Lilu. Well, that I want you to know you're 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 safe, mm -hmm. grounded. <laughs> you're you're protected. Take it with breath. Take it easy. Thank you, Sonia. And this this guidance. Listen to it again and again. It'll make some. It'll it'll go in deeper and deeper as you go along. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. I wish you a beautiful day. Thank you for this you. awesome all session. My love. Beautiful. Yes. All my love. Happy trails on your on your journey. Thank you. Thank you, Sonia. Much love. Bye. Thank you.